We first need to acknowledge, which we've all been saying today at the conference, um, that there is a problem, that there is a, a that communities are marginalised, um, and that the international system needs to be changed and shifted dramatically. Um, it, it, this we need to all take ownership and agency. Whew. <laughs> to promote a global sense of community, I think that. You know, one of the things that we really need to do is just to get to know each other and to create environments and contexts in which people from quite diverse backgrounds and cultural contexts and life experiences learn about each other, they get to know each other. Because I think quite often what happens is we live in our particular bubbles and we have um, an interpretation of the world or an experience of the world which is kind of given to us by media, by our peers, by um, in our education system and the like. And we don't really know each other across the world. Certainly arts and culture is a very powerful way to do that because of its the ability of artists to imagine a better future and to engage with their respective communities in a very creative way. The best thing we can do is to get rid of our tribalism. I mean, we are, since 1.9 million years, since we began to walk upright, we are tribalists. We live in tribes. And throughout our history, we've always lived in tribes. And we always have thought that our tribe is much better than the other tribe. And when we felt threatened by other tribes, we saw no reason not to kill them. So it's interesting that nowadays everyone talks about xenophobia. The xenophobia is not an invention of the nationalists or the populists. It's always been with us. It's one of the characteristics of the human species. So I think what we need to learn is to get rid of that, overcome our genetic disposition. Have a better sense of humor. <laughs> humor is so important and so lacking. So few people do it, but it's so needed. If we can laugh about things, then we can get together.